Good morning, everybody. I'm Sean McDonald in for Adam Sexton on this Sunday. You know, hospitals, doctors and nurses in the Granite State continue to deal with the challenges they face with COVID-19. But before some patients even get to a medical facility for the treatment, they're helped by paramedics and EMTs who are often in the first line of this pandemic. Here to discuss what it's been like and what is needed to make this job easier and more effective is Chris Stawaz, Regional Director for American Medical Response. Uh, how are you doing there, Chris? Good morning. Thanks for having me today. Thanks for joining me. Uh, you know, we've seen a huge spike in cases over the last three or four weeks here in New Hampshire. Can you describe uh, what it's been like for the EMTs, the paramedics out there? Well, we've, uh, in between Nashua and Manchester, we've responded to over a thousand uh, calls this year alone where there was a suspect COVID uh, involvement. So, uh, you know, we're, we're working these trips every single day in every kind of weather. Uh, if we, in the beginning of this pandemic, uh, everyone was challenged with the availability of PPE. Um, thankfully now we have uh, an ample supply, but it is a very taxing and uh, difficult situation for our medics to be in, uh, to have to not only worry about the patients that they care for, but themselves and, and their families when they go home. So uh, it, it's taken a toll on a lot of people and it continues to take that toll. When your crews go out and it's a possible COVID patient, can you describe what it is they, they have to wear? What, what kind of precautions they take? Yeah, well, we um, use universal precautions for all patients now. There are different levels depending upon the severity of uh, the patient or what kind of medical procedure that the medics may be performing in the field. Um, typically, it's an N95 mask with um, uh, eye shield as well, uh, but there may be gowns involved and obviously gloves. Uh, we have certain disinfection procedures that we do in the vehicles and the stations, uh, all designed to keep our crews safe and our patients safe as well. Can you describe what your crews are hearing out there in terms of attitude about the coronavirus or people's attitudes changing at all? I think more people are recognizing the uh, severity of it and the importance of wearing a mask. Certainly we're seeing the compliance level of the general public uh, has gone way up uh, versus earlier this year with, uh, with mask wearing and the importance of not um, doing the spread like that. Uh, but there remains a certain segment of the people who I think are, are afraid still, uh, rightfully so, uh, that they could be exposed to it. What we're also seeing, Sean, is um, people that are waiting to call an ambulance or waiting to seek medical care for something pre-pandemic that they would have gone for right away. Uh, and, and that's gonna have some long-term effects, we think, on the health and safety of the general public. Um, we have a campaign nationally called Minutes Matter, uh, where if you're having chest pain or difficulty breathing or any other type of uh, serious medical illness, we don't want people to wait because they may be uh, afraid of COVID. We want them to continue to call us, have us come out, do an assessment. Uh, the medics are very good at what they do. It's very safe for them to do that. But we're, we're worried about the long-term effects of people not seeking medical care for something that they would normally uh, immediately go seek medical care for. What about the effects on the EMTs and the paramedics themselves? What has this been like through all of this, through some of the quarantines I'm sure they had to deal with emotionally for them? Yeah, you know, we've been very lucky with the number of people that have contracted uh, coronavirus internally here, uh, as have many first responders across New Hampshire. Uh, they're very good at what they do with protecting themselves. But at the end of the day, you know, you go home to your family uh, and you have that uh, inkling in the back of your mind that, you know, I've taken care of five or six coronavirus patients today, and boy, I hope I'm not bringing it home with me. And, and that, that's a that's a very difficult um, uh, thing to wrestle with. You know, we've provided uh, mental health services for a number of our people. We have some really good mental health providers here locally in New Hampshire uh, that are good at um, helping people get through these uh, difficult situations. Um, but, you know, first responders generally try to take care of themselves. Uh, you know, the, we can't call 911, we're it. We have to deal with the situation at hand and find a way to mitigate it. Uh, and and they're, they're a close-knit group. They're very good at taking care of one another, but at the same time, um, there are, there are um, circumstances when we need to reach out for people to take care of our own mental health as well. And speaking of protecting them, uh, any idea when you get everybody vaccinated with the COVID vaccine, do you feel like communication about this has been pretty good? 
I think it has. Uh, the state's done a good job in informing uh, all of us about uh, what their plans are right now as of today. It looks like uh, the end of next week is the first opportunity for first responders in New Hampshire to start that vaccination process. Uh, we're going to do it in a very methodical way so that we're not vaccinating all of our staff at once. Uh, there are the potential for some side effects that we want to be wary of so that if um, you know, some of our folks do have those side effects, we'll still have adequate staffing to be able to uh, maintain what we put on the road every day. So uh, we're working with our police and fire uh, partners to make sure that we have a good plan in place so that we maintain adequate coverage, but we get our folks vaccinated if they so choose and, uh, and, and protect them. Now, before all this started, of course, the big topic was the opioid epidemic. And you had a recent report out that said uh, about opioid misuse that said that both Nashua and Manchester overdoses are continuing to trend lower over the course of the year. Uh, Nashua opioid ODs are down 22 uh, percent over the last year. Manchester down about 27 percent in the last year. Uh, why do you think we're seeing that trend? You know, that's a that's a million dollar question. Um, substance use disorder does not go away because of a pandemic. Uh, we, we know that for a fact, and people are still uh, looking for the opportunity to get that treatment in person. That's a, that's a huge component of uh, being able to be uh, properly treated for substance use disorder. It's, it's really perplexing as to why that's happening, but we are seeing some significant reductions, as you mentioned, over 20% in both communities, uh, which is, is great. We'll take that, uh, but there's a lot more work that needs to go into trying to determine exactly why that's happening. Um, but for now, we're, we're happy with that reduction, and we hope that it continues uh, going forward. And we still do have these uh, the homeless camps in Manchester and other parts of the state. What are your concerns as we head further uh, into the winter months? Well, certainly the weather is the biggest concern where we have uh, very cold nights, we're windy, uh, you know, we've got uh, rainstorms and snowstorms coming up. We want to make sure that those folks are, are safe. We have had some very good um, success recently in opening some additional shelter beds, uh, particularly in Manchester and uh, Nashua as well, uh, well ahead of schedule. So we're really hopeful that people will take advantage of those uh, shelter beds. They've been uh, very careful and diligent about making sure that there's social distancing and enough uh, square footage space so that people can be in there safely even during COVID and, and off the streets. Uh, certainly. Uh, uh, lastly, I, I wanted to ask you, what is your message for your EMTs, for the people that you work with, the paramedics out there, it has been a very trying year for everybody, but I can only imagine what it's like uh, on the front lines. Yeah, it's, you know, I've been doing this for 35 plus years and I have never had a year like this. Uh, my, my simple message to all of them is really thank you. Uh, they, they have done everything and more that we have asked uh, across the state, police, fire and EMS, to go out and take care of people. Uh, they put their heads down and do it. They don't generally ask for very much thanks in return. Uh, it's part of the job. They are a tremendous group of people who I think uh, we should all be proud of and, and thankful for. And it's interesting, we can hear the scanner traffic behind you, just how busy it is over there just on a, any day, right? It is, yeah. It's uh, You can hear it in the background right now, and, and you hear the reminder to everybody to wear uh, PPE, universal precautions required. Uh, and that kind of gives them a heads up that there's uh, likely a COVID patient that they're going to see or somebody with COVID symptoms. So it's that constant reminder. We, like everybody else, uh, we don't want our folks to become complacent about using proper PPE and, and disinfection. We, we hammer that message home every single day, every single shift so that we don't make that one mistake and uh, you know expose our, our employees or their families to, to any potential disease. All right, Chris Daywas from AMR, thank you very much. And of course, uh, be safe out there. Thank you and uh, appreciate the opportunity to, to speak to you today. All right.